Uh, initially, Keith Pompey reported there was going to be some interest. I think like two minutes later, Woj was like, yeah, he's coming to Philadelphia. <laughs> so it was, yeah, there was interest. All right. That Keith's reporting was certainly validated uh, on that one. Uh, what do you think of the I didn't have the chance to watch your 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 brief video you recorded for PHLY today, Devon. So tell me what your uh, your general thoughts. So are I initially Reggie. thought that it was an interesting move because one. Looking at Charlotte, we looked at a few other things and, and during the time that during the season where we thought there might be some buyout candidates and even during the offseason where are they going to move on from Grant Williams? Are they going to look to trade him? Are they going to let Miles Bridges walk? Are they going to let a few others start to move off some of those contracts that they have because they're rebuilding and they want to start off, they have a new head coach and all. And when the Reggie Jackson thing happened as part of a trade and sending him from Denver to Charlotte, I wasn't really looking at him. He was kind of mm-hmm. way far back in my mind uh, as far as a, a buyout candidate to be available to sign with someone else that's a contending team. So when it happened, I was oh, interesting. Okay, I didn't see that one coming. I should have been more prepared for that, but I was not. Hey, we were on vacation, not vacation, but in Vegas for nine days. We were pretty busy. We did a lot of work. I'm allowed to not have that one. So when I looked at him, though, championship experience, as much as I talked about it, every time I would tell Kyle and Derek and all of you about that Phoenix series against the Clippers when Kawhi Leonard was out for that Western Conference Finals, I always bring up how well Paul George played in that series, but I always talk about how he and Reggie Jackson were giving us at the time trouble because he could not miss. And it wasn't just the catch and shoot stuff. He was off the bounce, just doing things with a lot of shake and pull up jumpers his runners, his floaters. And yes, he was out there as a 6'2 guy doing what he did. But for me, even at 6'2", the one thing that Kyle often talks about is the size part where he doesn't pass the size test because of the back-to-back with him. But when he's engaged and he's playing, he doesn't look 6'2". He plays big, a little bit bigger than 6'2". He's got the the seven-foot wingspan, I believe, which... I do not. I have a decent sized wingspan, but it is but not, not that one. Not seven feet long. So for sure. taking away the wingspan part for me is when you watch Reggie Jackson. When again he is Reggie Jackson, he plays bigger than six two. So the first thing that I thought of was one: if Jared McCain is not having a good run, whether it's a week or two weeks or whatever it may be, Kyle Lowry is off for a game, as we talked about on yesterday's show. You can go to Reggie Jackson. He's played plenty of basketball games, logged a lot of minutes. He's been that guy who's been the star. But in this last iteration of his career here, he has been in Los Angeles and in Denver a role player. He has accepted his role as a role player. He knows who he is. And he can also potentially play next to Tyrese Maxey as a guy who, again, can play on ball when Maxey is playing off ball. They can both alternate in those positions. So while it's not a home run, we've talked about, hey, sometimes you need some singles. This one kind of dropped into their lap. And as a very very close friend of Paul George, I'd imagine that that had played a big part in this acquisition because they were very close in Los Angeles. It was talked about during that time. He was one that wore certain PEs, uh, player exclusives of Paul George's signature Nike shoe at the time because of how close they are uh, were and are. And I think that played a big part of it. So I was good with it because we're talking about late in the game and free agency. One that I didn't expect, a good name who I know has championship experience. He won a championship with Denver, understands his role, knows, knows who he is, can play both guard positions. And when we talk about catch and shoot, I don't have the numbers, but watching it playing off of Jokic, that guy catches and shoots and he makes a lot of shots. He takes a lot of big shots. He makes them as well. So I was good with the signing. Nice addition to the roster. Now they have one left because Darryl Moore basically essentially said they're going to leave one roster spot open. So I'm curious to see where that goes. But I did like the move when it did come down and I understand what they were thinking in adding him. So I I think my problem with it is less the player. Although I do think he's he's not done done, but he's certainly approaching like sure. this is the, the yeah. back part of his career, right? He's 33, 34. I say that it's always funny when I'm like, Boy, he's the oldest guy in the league. He's washed. And then he's like basically the same age as me. It's always a, <laughs> always a fun way to think about it, right? What, what I'm saying about these people, I'm also saying about myself right. in so many ways. I right. just don't happen to have the talent or the uh, skill to play in the NBA. He's a streaky shooter, mm-hmm. it's con- which is concerning. But the, the bigger thing is just that they have so many of these 6'1", 6'2", type guards that 
you just drafted a guy at 16 who the, at this point I'm like, Got some is, questions. is Jared McCain going to play? <laughs> right. Or is this going to be a big Delaware blue coat season for him as they kind of bring him along and figure out what he is in the NBA? Now, granted, different skill set, right? He, Jared McCain right now is more of a spot up relocation, dead eye type shooter. Reggie historically has been a better pull up guy, right? Like he's a comfortable pull up shooter. You can ask him to take catch and shoot shots. I don't know that that's his specialty necessarily. Can do a little bit of playmaking, although he's more in the score first and play make off of the attention that he can draw. I think he's crafty enough for a backup ball handler as like a pick and roll guy. I think if you, he's probably got a better chance to run some stuff with somebody like an Andre Drummond and Absolutely. just like get him some easy shots. Two veterans and, that just know how to do yeah. it. Yeah. Like you've seen that with, I think he's better suited throwing lobs to like, you know, like a DeAndre Jordan mm-hmm. that he played with sometimes in Denver or somebody in that mold. But he can play make enough that I've complained about the passing on the team. I'm, I don't think he's an advanced passer by any means, but he's at least someone who can dribble pass and shoot I'm never going to just like poo-poo that. It's a minimum contract. So a lot of that is to your point about it's relationships. It's wanting to be and accepting, Mm -hmm. you know, potentially a deep bench role, potentially not playing on a given night. If he's coming in here with clear eyes about who he is and what he can offer, then that's fine. But I do think eventually you need somebody like, if this concept that we've talked about with the the two through four switchable wings doesn't work from a rebounding perspective, mm-hmm. they don't really have a plan B. You don't have options. You will have to change the roster to some degree because you can't just play all the guards. That's yes. just not going to work. So yeah. it's nothing against Reggie. I think he's fine for a minimum guy. Yeah. In fact, I think right. he's probably better than a lot of other guys who will sign for minimum deals. It's just, you know, do they have any kind of wiggle room if the current iteration of the team doesn't work out? I'm not so sure. And one thing that you always talk about, you pointed it out, is the passing. He can pass a little bit, right? Enough. He's a veteran guy. He's seen it all. knows the coverages. knows what to do. But it's also the ball handling. We've talked about the ball handling, just needing guys who can dribble the basketball, needing a guy who can entry pass. And do that. And he, he can do some of those things. So, again, it's just a single that comes late in the in the run here. It, it's a single when you're already up 10-1 in the eighth inning and you're just doing stuff to 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 keep the game going. And yeah. it's like, oh, they, they, they have it going tonight. They, everybody's getting a hit. Well, he's now the latest to come in here, and it's just another veteran to go in there. And I don't think Jared McCain can have enough people teaching him how to be a pro and get mm. ready for that role that he's going to potentially be And from different be in. types of guys, right? Like Reggie is not the same as Kyle Lowry, is mm-hmm. not the same as Maxie, is not the So there's kind of a diversity in both personality and skill set that hopefully McCain, while he's here, can take pieces from all these guys. Including Jeff Doughton with the Summer League team with yeah. him. The, the, the now last that's couple what I would weeks. say. The, so the Doughton two-way now makes a little less sense when you have all these guards. It's like, is he ever going to have an opportunity to play? I I don't know. So maybe you use that on somebody there, but that's, yeah. it doesn't really matter. You can decide a different thing on the two way. Not a bad enough. pickup. Uh, just just an okay pickup for uh, this stage of free agency. 